G'day guys and gal, it's no secret the Games Workshop loves Space Marines above all else. They have literally hundreds of named characters split across the legions and chapters, dozens of those named characters having tabletop models themselves. The Orcs on the other hand have Gazkal and pretty much just Gazkal when it comes to tabletop named characters. It's an absolute tragedy since Orc players are known to be by far the coolest people, and I don't play Orcs. Now I know they have very recently released two new Orc characters, bringing the grand total to three. Wow. But there are plenty of really awesome Orcs in the lore of 40k, and if GW won't give them the respect of a tabletop model, then at least I can give them the respect of a spotlight for the next 10 minutes or so. Speaking of legendary Orcs with tabletop models, the latest and probably my favourite so far major mini is out, the Orc Demon Killer. This was a joy to produce, slapping on numerous battle trophies as literal armour, while still showing that despite technically being in service to the Blood God, the Orc Demon Killer is just as patriotic to Gork and Mork as he's ever been. Despite, you know, the subtle changes his corrupted body is going through. While he isn't massive, he does scale larger than orc boys and knobs as befitting his status as a legendary war boss. His proportions line up more with the new orc models rather than the older goofier ones. His base is also custom, featuring a large demon skull as well as volcanic glass. Overall, very appropriate to his vibe. So if you wanted to get your very own orc demon killer for your army, or you just want an awesome unique new model to paint, then link is below to pick this bad boy up. Remember, shipping is free on all orders over $70. US, so why not pick a few other models while you're there, like the King Orc for example. Today we'll go over the lore of the 5 best Orcs in 40k lore that are relatively unknown or don't have a tabletop model, hopefully showing off that the Orcs have more than just Gazkal swinging for them. Now let's get into it. There's no point beating around the bush with this one. The first orc out of the five today is probably pretty recognizable. Tusker, Demon Killer, the war boss that decided to yeet his wire into the realms of chaos because he thought fighting demons was fun. Now generally yeeting into hell is a very bad idea and almost always results in instant insanity, demonic possession and all round bad times. But orcs didn't get the memo. Their brains aren't too worried about petty stupid things like going mad. So Tusker and his army were able to tear through and sack multiple demon worlds, getting Korn's direct attention in the process, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Tusker started off as any other war boss, in command of a ship with an okay army looking for a good scrap. He was somewhat famous amongst orcs, known for his obsession with fighting enemies that were bigger and scarier than he, which you know isn't exactly a unique orc trait, but you'll see what I mean. During warp transit, a big ass demon got aboard Tusker's ship and started tearing through his boys. It's not clear what kind of demon it was, but it was pretty gnarly. Tusker, with a massive stiffy for battle, charged the demon and the two punched on, with Tusker mortal combating that bitch with his power claw, killing the demon and claiming its horns as his trophy. See this was a bit unusual as most demon bodies would vanish after being slain, however Tusker was able to keep an aspect of their body to have as a trophy, likely using his wah energy to prevent them from being properly banished, hence Tusker is one of the few people in the galaxy that can actually mount demon skulls on his trophy rack. With such a good fight, Tusker had a epiphany, killing demons was a fucking vibe. So using a shitload of weird boys, his orc psychers, Tusker was able to bypass the Cadian gate and Leroy Jenkins into the Eye of Terror. The Imperium was surprised but didn't see much point in trying to stop two of their enemies from fighting, so Tusker didn't have too much drama getting into the Eye. In the Eye, he burnt Nurgleite Swamp Worlds, shattered Titsunichi and Crystal Worlds, and cocked Block Slaneshi Slut Worlds. It was only when Tusker arrived at a Cornite world did he meet his match. Against him was a large Cornite army led by the Blood Prince, an exalted demon prince of Korn. Now Tusker was a G, he was tough, strong and had put in a good shift, but despite his determination, the blood prince was too good. As Tusker lay dying, his remaining weird boys were able to distract the blood prince, allowing Tusker to literally slice off the blood prince's cock and balls with his power claw, a final solid gag before Tusker expired. Korn was like, holy shit that was fucking awesome, and decided to revive Tusker and his armies to fight the Cornite demons again. Day after day, Tusker and his boys were overjoyed to fight and die. It wasn't like some Dormammu time loop bullshit. Tusker remained his memory of each death, yet he didn't care. After countless reincarnations, Korn was so impressed that they still had the will to fight that he teleported them from the demon world straight into his realm, so that they may do battle every single day in front of his brass citadel. It's rare to get that level of respect from Korn, especially from an orc that still praises Gork and Mork. Now you know why I made the orc demon killer. What makes an orc orky? Well, in honesty, it's all about having 
fun and doing really whack shit. Like how Warlord Grizzguts traveled back in time and killed his past self in order to get a copy of his own favorite gun, not stopping for a second to worry about the consequences to that kind of action. And boy, were there consequences. Let me explain. Grizzguts was a competent and vicious orc, leading a large war that was about to devastate Imperial space. However, while commencing his warp jump, something extremely rare happened. He, along with his war, traveled back in time and appeared where they had entered the warp, coming face to face with a past copy of himself and his entire past war. So now there were two Grizzguts and two wars. This is extremely rare. Seeing the past and future is pretty common in 40k, but actually traveling between the two is not. Usually it takes literal god power to do it, but Grizzguz managed it by mistake. Seeing that his past self had his favorite shooter, and that all orcs love as much Dakar as possible, Grizzguts killed his past self, taking the second copy of his gun as well as doubling his war's size. However, the orcs within the war were so rattled by what had just happened, and weren't too comfortable hanging out with themselves. It got to a point that the war erupted into civil war, destroying itself in the process and saving countless lives that would have been devastated by the double war. It's unclear what happened to Grizzguts as I don't think he's been mentioned since, but it's more than likely he died alongside his war, dual wielding his gun like a boss. If you were ordered to bring down an enemy titan by yourself, one million out of a million times, you would fail. It's one of the few things that are a genuine 0% success rate, as you would have to somehow penetrate the titan's void shield, armor plating, and then get inside and kill its crew, all the while the titan is trying to murk you. Good luck, mate. However, for Uthak, this was to be his moment of glory. While attacking an Imperial world, the Bad Moon's boss Uthak, fighting under the banner of Demeklord's Tekwa, was faced with some resistance in the form of four enemy titans. Now, the orcs did have a Mega Gargan to even the odds, but Mega Gargans aren't exactly known for their maneuverability, hence the Imperial Titans were able to strafe it and dodge and weave out of its main fire. This was unacceptable. What the fuck is the point of a titan if you use it to dodge? Now, a quick note, Ulfthak wasn't some random orc we had just met. He had gone through some shit on the way to the world. Old Mate had just managed to smash a Castellan robot apart with the subsequent explosion ripping him open. However, he was a true git and respected by his orc brethren. An orc pain doc cut off his head and stuck it onto his old boss's body, making him more powerful. Reattaching decapitated orc heads to larger bodies to shortcut their way through bodybuilding is a very good strategy with the orcs and something that has been used multiple times now. Ulfthak was back and better than ever. However, this does bring us to our Titan conundrum. Ulfthak possessed something of an imagination and if there's anything we know about orcs, it's that their imaginations can be quite powerful. So grabbing a fellow orc and a squig, he stole an orc motorbike off a rival orc along with that orc's Gretchen before full throttling towards the enemy warlord Titan. Now this wasn't just any orc motorbike, it had like a mini warp drive on it that meant that upon pushing a big red button, it would briefly transition into the warp and reappear further up the road, like a mini teleport similar to what the Elder Warp Spiders do. The orcs reappeared directly in front of the Imperial Warlord Titan, and with the speed of the bike, the effects of the warp spaghetti and some good old fashioned wah energy, they breached the Titan's void shields and smacked onto its armoured hull. Miraculously, both orcs, the Gretchen and the Squid survived the impact unharmed. They cut their way through the Titan's eyes, which placed them directly in its command center. From here, they massacred the crew, including the Moriarty, Princeps, and the Tech Priest in pretty comical fashion. Like the Squig was trying to eat the Gretchen, but missed and accidentally ate the Princeps' head instead. After fucking around a bit, the Titan tipped over and the small band of orcs jumped out, charging once again at Imperial forces. Absolute beasts. Funnily enough, this wasn't the only time in the lore that an especially excited orc managed to take down a titan by itself. Wazdaka Gutsmech also managed it. Wazdaka is a legend amongst orcs, the greatest orc bike boy to ever live, as he drives around his obscenely modified war bike that has the stopping power of a tank. Although he was already a legend enough to form his own war made entirely of bike boys and speed freaks, his name would be immortalized on the world of Skalax 6. His army was getting shredded by a warlord titan, with their low caliber bullets unable able to do a dent. So Wazdaka was like Leroy Jenkins uh, and drove his bike full speed at the Titan's head. Now his bike didn't have a warp drive so he hit that void shield like a motherfucker head on, somehow managing to penetrate it and the armor beneath, setting himself ablaze as he quickly massacred any crew who had survived the initial impact. Now void shields can withstand shit like volcano cannons, so how did an orc bike break through it and the armor beneath it? 
Unclear, but when it comes to orcs, the how isn't very relevant. The final orc worth talking about is none other than the beast. This is a very, very random part of 40k lore, where the orcs somehow emerged as the galaxy's greatest threat and literally had the Imperium at its mercy, all because of some hectic prime orc, a demi crook called the Beast, which popped out of nowhere and was so powerful that his white energy was able to ascend the entire orc population multiple tiers up the intelligence tree. They started farming, using diplomacy, and had literal fucking teleporting attack moons. The entire Imperial Fist chapter was killed during the War of the Beast, and even Vulcan, the strongest Primarch, wasn't able to cleanly slay the beast, instead having to tackle it into a vat of pure white energy, which annihilated both of them. It's often theorized that the reason why the Emperor was so desperate to rush the Great Crusade was because he wanted to be ready to take on the beast. After all, the Imperium only ended up beating the beasts, and I mean beasts, because there was actually like 12 of them, because of some wacky reverse war bullshit. In a straight up war, the Imperium had zero chance and would have struggled even with the United Imperium with its legions and Primarchs intact. Overall, a very bizarre time. However, the beast was no joke, and I find it pretty funny how most people don't seem to know of or speak about the most powerful orc to ever live in the past 60 million years. Orcs deserve more love, and this comes from a guy that is never going to paint an orc army in my life. The one on my shelf behind me was bought off a mate. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up the orc demon killer. And if you haven't after seeing the orcs in this video, then you're a right git. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more orky content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.